Welcome to The Pitch. I'm Hans Lee of Livewire Markets. And our guest today is Andrew Swan, Man Group's Head of Asia X Japan Equities. And today we're going to harness his decades of experience in this asset class and learn how you too can generate alpha in the behemoth that is the Asian equity market. Andrew, thanks for joining us. I understand you just got off the plane. I did indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming in and, and, and joining us. So first of all, for people who may not know about you or may not recognize your name, Tell us about your background in markets and in particular Asian equities. I know this is not your first rodeo. No, um, without giving away my age, I have been actually investing for more than 20 years now consistently in the region. Um, I spent most of that time up in Asia, but came back to Australia a few years ago. Okay, all right. And, and firms, firms you were at before Man Group were where? Yeah, so before joining Man Group, I was at BlackRock, the head of Asia and emerging markets, um, fundamental equities. And prior to that, I was with JP Morgan. Okay, all right, so some, some big names there. So as you say, if you've been in markets for you know, over 20 years, spending a lot of time in the region itself, what is the biggest change you've seen in your time investing in these markets? And how has that affected your investment view? Look, I think the way we invest um, in terms of what we believe in or what I believe in hasn't really changed at its core. But I think the themes which have been driving the market, um, I guess you could sort of categorize them into both short and long cycles. Um, we've had probably two big long cycles. You know, one, really when I started my career, um, China entering the World Trade Organization was a you know, transformational moment. Um, I think the second probably moment was after the global financial crisis, the, how the economic model in China changed at that point. Um, and and I, I guess we're pretty much on the cusp of now a third change. Um, it's almost these things come in decades. Um, so these are the long cycles. Um, short cycles, you know, are more around monetary and fiscal policy, both locally and globally. Um, and I think the combination of both short and long cycles means there's a lot of volatility in the region. It is an emerging part of the world still. Um, it seems to always be emerging. But with emerging parts of the world, you get a lot more volatility. Yeah, no, absolutely. So with all that said then, what is your approach to generating alpha in this asset class? There's a, there's a lot of research around what really drives returns in the region. and. The, for us, and again, what I've done to the core for more than 20 years, is trying to work out where surprise my lie versus what the market's anticipating on a company's fundamentals or profits. Um, and the, the, what the, the phrase we use is earnings surprise or earnings revisions. Um, and what we like to do is own stocks, which we think you know, profits will be higher than what the market expects um, and avoid stocks um, where profits are most likely to be lower than what the market expects. And I think um, that's what I've been doing pretty consistently now for 20 years, and it does deliver consistent returns if you execute well. Okay, well, we've got that chart there up on, on screen for, for people who want to take a, a closer look at the effect of earnings revisions and the power that has in the Asian equity region. So with that said, where have you had previous success with this approach? Look, I think the key to this approach is that it the sources of those returns, whether from whether it's sectors or countries and even investment styles, does change through time. So rather than have a bias per se, I think you need to have a flexible approach. Um, because you know, again, you've been just looking over the last 20 odd years, we've had China leadership, we've had India leadership, we've had consumer stocks leading the market, we've had um, technology stocks leading the market. Um, really in the to the first part of the last um, 20 years, it was value stocks that did very well when the global and the regional economy was doing well. And the last 10 years, it's been more growth stocks which tend to do well in, in lower growth environments. Um, so the reason I've been able to do this for a long period of time with consistent returns is really look at these sorts of things agnostically, not have bias around them because ultimately what leads the market is very much hostage to the macroeconomic environment. Um, and sometimes if you do have a bias, you can have great performance for a period of time, but then the macro changes and leadership changes, uh, and then that style goes out of favor for you know, a long period of time. So the key to longevity, I guess for me in the industry, is being very flexible or agnostic around style. Um, and also the other point is this, what we do is really try and minimize the macro in many ways. We like to take a view on how macro can influence asset prices. But relative to the benchmark, what we try and do is minimize that macro risk and maximize what we call idiosyncratic risk or stock specific. Uh, and so our returns get a little bit of help from the macro, getting the macro right, but really mostly it's stock specific, a diversified set of stock specific opportunities in the region that deliver most of the returns through time. Okay, so 
With all that said then, tell us about two, maybe one or two assets that you hope will outperform over the next few years with this approach, with this philosophy in mind. Look, I think the setup today is very interesting because we have been in a trending market that is you know, literally, as we speak, um, starting to reverse. Um, coming out of COVID, let's call it the last three years, um, India has led the way in the region. It's had both the best absolute growth um, it's also had the best revisions in the region. And, and what we tend to find is the change in the valuation multiple correlates very well with earnings revisions. So if earnings are being revised up, then multiples tend to expand as well. And the flip of that is that when earnings are being re revised down, multiples tend to contract. So you get this sort of double whammy on share prices because multiples correlate with revisions. Now, the setup today is that India has had the best revisions, the best growth, and as a result, is the most expensive market in the region, both relative to other markets, but also relative to its history. And that's occurring at a time when liquidity in the economy is a little bit tight, um, particularly post the election we saw in the middle of the year, uh, and expectations are high. So we've entered 2024 by moving money out of India and into China, because on the other side of things is China. And, and China has had some pretty significant challenges from a macro point of view. Uh, for a number of years now and for different reasons. But the result of the, these trends has been that earnings expectations have been revised down a lot or earnings revisions have been negative and valuation multiples have contracted um, exactly at a time when we think liquidity is going to move from being tight to loose. So the big opportunity for us, even though things are starting to move as I speak, is really to be looking at China more than India at this point in time. Right, those are all really interesting points there. Andrew Swan, thank you for joining us there from Manji LG. And speaking of China versus India, that's actually going to be the subject of our next video in this series of The Pitch. So if you enjoyed that interview and were waiting to hang out for the next one, you can subscribe to the Live Wire Markets website as well as our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.